Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Let's start this video off with Ryzen 7000 on the AM4 platform. Yeah, are you interested in picking up a shiny brand new Zen 4 based processor, but you don't want to pay all of that cash for AM5? Well, there could be some good news for you. Allegedly, there are plans internally for AMD for at least considering releasing Zen 4 on the AM4 platform. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, an excellent interactive learning platform focused on STEM. For many, nothing makes our eyes glaze over faster when learning than watching an overly long lecture video. Brilliant is a great way to learn interactively, meaning that courses are on hand and engaging. STEM can be intimidating, but Brilliant offers courses designed for all levels, starting as a beginner and then courses moving to a median and then advanced, allowing you to learn at your own pace. When signing up, you can choose not only your math comfort level, but also what you're trying to get out of your brilliant experience. For example, whether you're trying to expand your professional skills or learn as a teacher or student. With 60 plus courses on offer, the perfect one for you is just waiting to be discovered. For me, I've enjoyed the computer science fundamentals and programming with Python. The interactive nature of the courses were a great approach. It's not enough to be told that you got the question wrong, but being told why you got the question wrong and being able to interact with various objects to understand why your answers were incorrect is very helpful. Plus, you can get started for free with a seven-day free trial if you head over to brilliant.org RGT. The first 200 people will also receive 20% off of the annual membership. So you guys know the story at the moment about AM4. It's essentially been one of the best platforms in terms of forwards and backwards compatibility that has been released in recent memory. Possibly ever, actually. Let me know in the comments if you can think of another platform that has been so, you know, so supported. But yeah, if you had like a 300 series motherboard, providing that the vendor has released updated BIOSes, you could have upgraded from a 1700X to a 3700X to like a 5700X, whatever. Obviously, I'm missing <laughs> couple of even generations there but you guys get the idea it's been a really massive success for AMD but obviously AM5 coming into the equation is a huge change not only are we going to be seeing things like DDR5 support PCIe Gen 5 support and so on but even the socket itself changes significantly basically there is no longer forwards and backwards compatibility but there is a rumor that has been swirling around the internet the past couple of days started by Grayman on Twitter he alleges that AMD internally are at least considering bringing some Zen 4 based processors to the AM4 platform. Now, it is worth noting before we continue the discussion that one, he's saying it's considered and it is definitely not definite. That was a terrible sentence. And furthermore, just because there's a product which is based upon a Zen 4, it does not necessarily mean that we're going to be getting, you know, the 7950X equivalent to the uh, AM4 platform. So even if this does happen, it could be a lower core count variant, it could be an APU, it could be anything. Now, I will say that according to what I've heard, and I actually had a source reach out to me about this, they're telling me that this is extremely unlikely. In fact, they've said that it's actually not going to happen. With that said, it's only a single source, and Grayman's had pretty good information as well. So I'm not saying it's not going to happen. Just from what I've been told with one source, I find it quite unlikely. The second issue is that, well, I, I suspect that there's going to be some technical feasibility issues, especially because, you know... Let's, well, basically, all of the standards are totally different. Again, DDR4, DDR5, and all the other stuff that, quite frankly, gets kind of lengthy to mention in this video. Um, but the other thing as well, and this is kind of a big one, is that AMD have implied that they don't really have any grandiose plans in the future for AM4. Now, again, anything and everything could change. They may internally be doing a little bit of like, hmm... Well, you know, Raptor Lake has DDR4 support. Maybe we need like a cheaper option. But again, they also have like the B series boards and other entry level things. DDR5 prices, I'll grant you, they're not exactly cheap, but they are coming down. Um, it's going to be really interesting, to be honest, if this is true. I'm just very skeptical that it's actually going to come to fruition. Um, I don't necessarily know if from a personal perspective I actually want that. I say that as someone who has several AM4 motherboards, like, yeah, I kind of feel like 
the platform has served its purpose it's probably going to now become relegated to more of a, a legacy slash cheaper entry level thing and honestly it's still really good and the other thing and you know this is kind of a big deal it's like I, I kind of feel like AM4 has had a really good send-off anyway with like the 5800X3D, which has proven to be an excellent proof of concept, honestly. Um, and when you consider just the, you know, let's just say for sake of discussion, you've got 5900X, which is already popular processor, the 5950 or whatever. It's not like that processor has suddenly become bad when AM, uh, AM5 comes out. It's still going to be an absolutely monstrous processor. Um, I think that a lot of people are going to be very excited about Zen 4. I'm curious, actually, what you guys are kind of considering doing. Like, are you adopting a wait-and-see approach for uh, Zen 4 as well as Raptor Lake? I know a couple of my friends have said that they're quite happy with what they've got. Uh, one of them has, like, a, I think it's a... I can't remember if it's a 12700 or 12900K. Uh, my, my brain's drawn blank. And another uh, dude has, like, a 5900X. And both of them are just like, you know what? I'm absolutely good. Like, I'm, I'll am i miss a few frames in games, but eh, whatever. They're much more interested at the moment in GPU upgrades, and I suppose it does depend upon your usage scenario. So let me know down below what you think about that. Would you be interested even in upgrading to the new generation? Or is your plans largely revolving, of course, around the next generation GPUs? And that's a great segue, because we're going to be talking about some very interesting stuff which has emerged concerning the next generation GPUs. And this is actually a patent that AMD have filed. Now, I want to give my disclaimer that I always give in this, and that is a patent is a patent. A patent does not necessarily become a product. With this said, um, this patent, I have reached out to a couple of people, and they've told me that it seems to pertain at least this is not based upon what it says in the patent, but they've told me that this is what they've been told. The patent does seem to pertain to both uh, cDNA and rDNA future products. Now, with this said, it may not. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, there's like so much bloody conflicting information for rDNA alone. But the patent itself is extremely interesting. Dual Vector Arithmetic Logic Unit is the actual patent name. And I want to give just a quick shout out to Ulrak on Twitter. They're actually a really good account. If you're interested in geeky stuff, I actually advocate you give them a follow as well. I'll, of course, link their Twitter account in the video description. Now, this this uh, patent does get pretty technical. And for the sake of the video length, I'm going to really kind of dumb down a lot of this and also make it pretty simplified. If, though, you are interested in reading the patent, I will, of course, also link the patent in the video description. Now, this patent is actually interesting for a couple of reasons. One of those, and I'm sure most of you know this anyway, if you've been following all the RDNA news, is that uh, basically RDNA 3 allegedly doubles the number of shaders per work group processor. So basically it goes up from 128 to 256. But there are challenges when it comes to the stuff. Basically, throughput is a thing. And having a crap ton of shaders, well, uh, you still need to actually feed them with data. And this is a really big thing, especially when we're coming to things like, you know, compute-based tasks, because this patent, and it even mentions it several times throughout the patent, that it's not really pertaining to something graphics-orientated. Basically, it's essentially minimizing latency of compute-based tasks. Now, basically, what AMD have done here is double the instruction throughput per SIMD32 um, by implementing two ALU pipelines per unit. In fact, if we look at figure one here, you can actually kind of see what looks like some type of SOC with a CPU and GPU. Now, this certainly looks more CDNA-like to me, but again, there are APUs which also feature the you know um, rdna3 architecture and again the thing with patents is that they are implemented or rather you know drawn if you will so ambiguously that they're essentially designed to well yeah just kind of not give away so much information that another company can be like oh look on the 15th of november amd will be releasing this graphics card and it has all of these different 
you know all of this different functionality obviously they can't do that so they, there has to be some uh, ambiguity in there so basically multi-cycle simd instructions can now basically be executed in just a single cycle so not only is this a lot more efficient in terms of how you know wave fronts can be uh, executed on the gpu but further to this it could reduce latency and it has a ton of ramifications unfortunately what we don't still have is a complete picture as to how amd have changed rdna free and you know so on and so on we're starting to get a good idea but there's still a number of questions it's going to be an interesting one i suspect to see the direction amd are going with this um you know AMD have done a lot in terms of the compute stuff. Uh, we've seen, of course, a lot of the, the driver updates that you guys may have been, you know, kind of looking at, especially with OpenGL uh, performance, uh, OpenCL performance as well. OpenCL actually is a really big one. And actually, when I was first leaking about these driver updates, I had been told that they were going to be, you know, really impressive, especially for OpenCL, but I didn't actually realize just how impressive AMD were. Well, just basically, it's, it's just really, they've done a ton of optimization. Let's just cut the BS. Um, it's, I think it's really important because AMD had definitely wanted to get into a lot more market, market segments, including, of course, prosumer work and professional workloads. And to me, a really big question is how are they going to be marketing these products? Um, especially, of course, given Apple uh, kind of pulled the plug on using their own custom silicon. So there's, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff that I think RDNA 3 is going to be bringing to the table along with, you know, CDNA. So it's going to be a very interesting journey, I suspect, with Team Red. Uh, that's just about it for this video. I was going to be covering a couple of other topics, but quite frankly, it's already getting kind of long. And yeah, I think that's just about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, then you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and subscribe and all of that stuff. Um, and I'm going to let you guys go and uh, turn on the air conditioner because it is kind of warm. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.